Again. And exactly this is what um, it's going to be about, this talk. Bits and bytes on the field, uh, zeros and ones in IT. Our speaker has looked at this and will tell us what the state of the art is um, in agriculture. Uh, please, a round of applause for Fritz Dietrich Burkhardt. Thanks for the nice introduction. It's interesting to see uh, that we have developers uh, who work in this field. Luckily, it's only three or four, so I can tell everybody else something of this. Um, so, right, shortly something about me. I got a bachelor in ecological um, agriculture science from Kassel. I uh, uh, dealt with uh, the future development of agriculture, which is what I want to talk about in this presentation, and ultimately talk to you about this. Currently, I am doing a master's in Osnabrück. This, um, is called precision plant management. It's about sensor technology, um, agricultural science, profit management, and it's quite nerdy actually. So, and quite interesting. I put it into different sections. What can we do? I'm gonna give you a little input on on that. Um, we can mechanically uh, protect the soil. That's without software, that's um, simply analogously. Um, we can move the machines so that they protect the soil a little. This actually was done uh, with software and it shows how a farmer drove uh, over um, his field over a year. The white spaces are where he hasn't driven. And these machines are pretty heavy, and the soil doesn't really like that. And so we think about how we deal with this. And one trick we do is um, is separating the growing area from the driving area. And there are where you um, create basically driving lanes on the field. And I did my bachelor thesis, and that's why I didn't speak here le last year, because they didn't want, it, want me to talk about this here. We can also do platooning, and that's quite nerdy already, because we have two machines here, quite just regular machines that are controlled by a single driver. They are connected electronically, and um, the company Akko, Fendt, has developed this, has developed this, but it's quite for legal reasons, it's quite tricky to do this. The question being, how do we get the second machine, which doesn't have a driver, onto the field? That's too much effort. And well, agricultural workers aren't very expensive. So this has been put on the back burner again for the time being. But this would be taken back again when it gets ready. But he. I think it's really interesting, and that has been developed a couple of years ago. What's been in existence for a couple of times since 1999, 2000, um, is automatic track guidance via GPS and RTK. On the right-hand side, you can see how precise this is. So you can basically on to up to 2.5 meters you can guide the vehicle on the field but that's rather expensive so the so-called sf1 signal what you see on the slides is for free it doesn't cost any money um, with 26 centimeters is rather precise but it's still not exact enough for high precision agricultural so I just put it now on the slides so you you can see how uh, the the case where, where the driver sits within the tractor how it looks like it could be even more screens within the tractor in the future
Wir können auch ähm, Echtzeitertragskartierung machen. Ziemlich spannendes. We also can map the the field via real time cartography and it directly maps the field where I actually got got my crop and these files are sometimes transferred uh, to web apps directly in real time and sometimes from other from they can even be gotten by the driver themselves in real times and via a GIS system or a driver management system you can even derive information for example when you see the red parts on the field you can even connect this information with other maps on the left hand side you see the various technologies that are used with this technology with these application uh, maps so ein witziger Wagen gezogen von einem Geländewagen. There is a very funny carriage that drives over the field and and measures the um, electrical resistance and conductibility. And that's actually useful for um, figuring out um, uh, the value of the land. And from all of this information, we can um, derive how uh, good the yield of the land is. And you can see uh, in the, on the right-hand side this uh, construct on the tractor, and this measures the chlorophyll in the leaves, and from the amount of chlorophyll it can uh, derive information about the health of the plants. And uh, while it's driving, in real time, it can adjust the amount of um, of fertilizer uh, that it uh, puts out at the back of the car. Um, and of course we can uh, build new machines um, to, our, uh, to our threshers. Looks very much like a transformer, but it's not the in in interesting picture. The much more interesting picture are the two at the right hand side. And these are models of the insides of uh, of a thresher or uh, a uh, machine that cuts uh, wood into tiny pieces. Um, and the, this, these machines can calibrate themselves and figure out how much energy they have, how much capacity they have for um, doing their work themselves and figure and control themselves and uh, there is actually a world championships of, of threshers um, and I, I, I know some people who um, just this year beat uh, the best thresher driver with their autonomous um, thresher um, and it's being studied um, uh, at the university where I did my bachelor's, we can hear how sharp these knives are and we can... Uh, if you look at the image on the right, the, the red drum, um, that spins extremely fast and we can put a mic there and we can hear how sharp the knives are. On the bottom part of the image, you can even measure how dirty the crop is that is gathered by the thresher. That is also very important to know because it determines how long you want to store the crop and the quality of it. I've already talked about this aspect, the maps we, we create uh, in real time. They are documented. And there is a huge interconnectivity between all the devices. And obviously this costs a lot of money, but the prices for produce are very low, which creates other problems in itself. It's very interesting to see how 
How agricultural farmers document their stuff, and there is only 34 percent of agricultural farmers in Germany who actually document their produce electronically. Die Büroarbeit in dem eigentlichen Bauern da sein. The office work when you are a farmer is close to 70 percent. So if you map that to the electronic work done, this is really incredible. So basically you need to document every step you do when you work as an agricultural farm, farmer. You need to do this to get subventions by the European Union. So it's similar to when you go to financial part. Noch Automatisierungspotenzial, dass man am Ende einfach die Maschine vielleicht mit dem Webportal verknüpft. There is still a huge automation potential, so that you maybe also can connect the machine to your web portal and so on. But I will talk about this later, get to you into a discussion about this. Wir können Inhaltsstoffe messen. Dieser graue Kasten oben links ist ein. Very interestingly, you can even um, measure the contents that you use on the field. On on the top of the, of the slide, you can measure within a machine that cuts the produce into little pieces. You can even measure the, the dryness of the produce. And on, this, on the same time, the sensor, which is mobile, that you can attach to any device you want, you can even measure the fertilizer you use on the, on the field. So that also determines how fast the tractor moves on the field or if the pump is working slower or faster. So you can see with crazy technology you can have very good results, which leads us to the next slide. The automatic um, loading of, a ve of the vehicle. There are several cameras on the part where the cut, cut, it, cut grass gets out of the of the cutter which is loaded into the vehicle and the driver sees actually a screenshot of this and this is very good when it's during the night when it's very when the air is not really well when the visibility is very low and so this is very useful for the driver and in the newer systems there is even a, a green line which indicates how fully loaded the vehicle is for this, you need the machines to talk to each other, which you can see in the following picture. That's how you actually sit today in a, in a current tractor. So the driver actually only supervises what's going on on the field. The most tractor drivers are maybe rather rounded, so to say, <laughs> because they're sitting all the time. And it's rather com comfortable. You can even um, put up the seat and it's rather comfortable to sit. So you supervise the communication of the machines, basically, on the field. The Azure line is actually, on the picture, is actually the, the machine on front. And the machines exchange data. That's how the app developer actually imagines this. When I did an apprenticeship last year by the company Zondia, we had a user very long time to actually install all these machines because they had a hard time to connect to each other. So you see, there is much, much stuff you still need to develop. This also applies to drones on the field. They're really cheap. You can use them in very different situations. For example, on the right-hand side, below on the bottom, you can, on the left-hand side, below on the bottom, you see how a tractor drives up front and the drone actually follows. And the drone can track what's going on on the field if there are stones or animals on the field. So especially uh, young animals that are still in springtime, they lie on the field and sometimes they don't run away when a tractor comes. And the additional problem to that is that you're not allowed to touch them because they will get repelled by their mother. So you need to actually develop a technology that discovers these young animals on the fields. There is a company called Pöttinger which de develops this technology, even a supersonic system that, m that will actually stop the machine and determine if there is an animal on this field and stop the machine in its tracks in order to protect the animals. 
hier zu schützen. Zusätzlich können wir zum Beispiel auch ähm, Herdenkontrolle machen über Drohnen. In addition, you can do even herd control via drones, which is kind of easy. The drone is equipped with a camera and the computer program know or the software realizes that black dot is a cow on the field and the green stuff, that's the field. So that's also very useful to count the cattle on the field, especially when they are, so for example, in the Alps, in regions where which are not really easy reached. So, for example, in the United States or in Australia, there are many cattle that are held without any restrictions and they roam freely on the fields. That's very useful to use drones. In addition, we can um, bring things into the field with drones. Um, this funnel with these balls, these are a type of wasps, um, which you can use to counter a certain kind of bad bug, whose name I've now forgotten. Um, and uh, this wasp is put into the field, is happy, um, kills all the bugs and goes away to do something else, killing more bugs that we don't want. Or with a low-flying dr drone and a certain camera, we can um, figure out the health of plants, which is quite interesting um, because 20, 30 years ago, you treated a field entirely homogeneously. Um, you had this field and you did all, You always did the same thing on that. And now we are basically down to thinking in pixels. You think of one of these yield maps and every pixel has a different color and a different um, uh, property and you can gain information from that and you can treat these things separately. Uh, um, and if you're doing biological uh, agriculture, organic agriculture, and uh, you're not using glyphosate everywhere, then, well, you don't have to anymore because you can figure things out much closer and you can fly very high and figure out where the, the nasty bugs are. And they, they, you've never got a field that is completely free of bad bugs, but you can pinpoint them and deal with them there instead of everywhere. So where do we go from here? Well, R2-D2 on the field. This um, device is being developed by a French company and it already exists. I've seen it um, for the first time in action this year. It fell over a few times. There's a fairly high center of gravity on this device, but it's still quite cute to see how this uh, drives over the, the field and, and removes the um, unwanted growth. Um, here, the robot... So, there are very diverse use cases for robots, and it's quite interesting to think about robots and uh, um, track guidance. And these robots can very, very precisely, um, by driving over the plants, um, deal with these uh, fields. And you don't need drones, you don't need tractors. And this is being developed at my university as well. They do plant inspections and they take soil samples and those are quite important, those soil samples. Generally you just send students and they have to put this huge metal um, plug into the ground and then pull it out and take out soil, sam soil samples and you have to bring them to the lab and do it there. And with these robots you can take soil samples analyze them in the robot and basically leave the soil on the field. Taking, yeah, so the samples stay on the field. And you can scale this up. Robots, small and large. A case is developing this. It's, um, drive, it's, it's out in the field. Many years ago, that was still just a model but that's where we're going. Small, large, machine, autonomously on, on the field. 
um, it's tricky to find tractor driver. They're not necessarily the smartest, and they certainly don't have the the most amazing job. So in the future, we can leave them behind. Maybe that's not not too bad. And then there is also the swarm concept. Um, the top image is not real. The, the, the truck is, but what he's carrying isn't. Uh, and uh, that's the idea. So the truck drives up, drops three um, autonomous machines, and they, as a swarm, deal with the field. There's also the small swarm concept where you have a small trailer with a small robot that is directed by a satellite and they load up the, their data to the cloud. And the farmer can actually look at it on the tablet, what's gathered on the field. Jetzt aber noch ein bisschen weniger Technikbesoffenheit. Um, so now we go a little bit to another field, we leave the tech hype. And in our agriculture, it's not all on the bright side. Maybe you know these numbers. The left graph shows the amount of insects globally. And the orange lines shows butterflies. And the right-hand side, you see the amount of endangered plants on the planet. Just let it soak in. Die ganzen Techniken dienen ja unter anderem auch der Dokumentation für EU-Agrarsubventionen. All these technologies serve also to get subventions by the, uh, by the European Union. So the subventions are also determined by the size of the land you own. But citizens also want that farmers do something for the environment, which might be difficult. You know, maybe the discussion. I'd like to give you here a quote by a CEO of a big company. We have 8 million of farmers in Germany which who do not own land, but they have some kind of imagination how agriculture should be done. And we have 280 farmers who actually do this. And the problem is they don't talk with each other. That's the current situation. They don't talk to each other. There is an imagination how agriculture should be done. Maybe you have it as well. Luckily, changes are slow. Change is slow. Those quotes, which I can't see from my translator's booth, please let them soak in. So the community of the, far the farmers have actually preached to use new technology and fertilizers, do monocultures. We dominate the earth. And now you noticed, and we noticed that this doesn't work as well as we hoped. Nature has, has developed resistances against fertilizer and other stuff. There are some plants that aren't destroyed by plants do not destroy glyphosate and they, they soak it in and take it up and store it. And so what do the, uh, the farmers do? do? On the left-hand side, you see the monoxide that we actually inhale. This has remained constant over the 25 years. This monoxide comes from the earth, and it comes from the earth, and it goes back to the earth. But this, uses, this leads to that the nitrate in the ground is being washed out. So it's not monoxide, it's nitrogen. So we need to ask our question, we need to ask ourselves what kind of agriculture do we want? We have the problem that prices are very low, fertilizers are cheap, and gasoline is, is expensive, fertilizers are more and more, are cheaper and cheaper, and everything is very cheap and readily available. And the milk crisis, and during the milk crisis, over the years you have preached, we need to grow. And suddenly you have too much milk, and no one wants to pay for it. Quickly, it wasn't um, fertilizers, it was um, uh, plant protection um, 
uh, stuff like glyphosate uh, that he was mentioning before. Okay, so we should ask ourselves how we want to define modern agriculture. And um, I want to open a discussion here at the Q&A or just afterwards next to the stage or even per email, Skype, whatever. I want to talk to you. There are platforms. Uh, we should ask ourselves, uh, does modern agriculture enslave the earth? Do we not look at uh, the soil, the earth, as a, a living system that has been growing for thousands of years? And maybe we will stop calling it nature and just calling it substrate? Or do we want to have a, an agriculture which uses the naturally available synergies like these wasps that I mentioned, uh, ecological um, agriculture which works with nature and uses the tools of nature? I'm of the opinion that, uh, thinking about the quote that I mentioned before, the, that we need a sort of societal contract which uh, defines how agriculture works and that involves everybody here. Um, you are very capable people. I've seen amazing talks and I'm very impressed by all the things that have been done and the people that are here. And maybe you should think about what you can do and I heard yesterday that friends of mine are doing techno gardening. They have a garden which is completely autonomously um, managed. We can directly buy from farmers. We can um, work towards biodiversity and ecological farming. There was a talk here about agroforce systems and Here's an interesting thing, which is really important. We have 7.5% ecological farming. And the question hasn't been answered, what is modern agriculture? And I don't think it's very modern if the big uh, pie chart is being paid for already having something for the size of the farm. The smaller bit of the pie, uh, that's where biodiversity and ecological farming is being um, subsidized. And for me, that needs to be exchanged. And that's something to think about. There is applause. So really, it's about making our agriculture fit for our, uh, for our children. We'll see how it develops, but these are a few ideas, um, you know, you can go look at cows, whether you eat them or drink their milk or whatever, you can just go there, take a look, um, go to a farmer and t tell him, I know how to do software, um, uh, I'll write you some software that will tell you how much... Um, uh, of these poisons you can save by doing ecological um, farming rather than what you're doing right now. I'd like, have, I'd like to have some questions from you now. Thank you. Thanks from tractor driver to tractor driver. This was a really interesting presentation. We have time for just one question. But then you can go to the speaker and ask him further questions. And he really welcomes you to join him for more discussions. How much phosphat and ni nitrogen you have for the following years? How much is left? And whose possession is it? I cannot answer the nitrogen question directly. I'm sorry. I'd have to research that. I, as far as I know, it's kind of like oil. We are still finding plenty. Uh, about privacy, it's an interesting uh, topic. 
it keeps the farmers cautious of new technology and something has to be done. The farmers want to keep their data with them and they want to know if uh, Mr. John Deere is looking at that or Mr. Arco and that's kind of important and the data belongs to the farmer and he's the only one who can decide about that and he can decide to sell it but then he should be reimbursed for that monetarily or with a new tractor or whatever. Thank you, and thanks also for listening to the English translation um, from uh, the of the talk Nullen und Einsen auf dem Akku.